What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my refined review and builds guide for Legendary Dimitri, Plumeria, Young Marth, Flame Emperor, Mamori, Ocean, and Altena. So let us begin with the winner of this batch in Legendary Dimitri who did get a weapon refined to Aired Bar and also remixed to his Atrocity. So Aired Bar did give him minus one special cooldown and speed based damage reduction up to 40% and now with the weapon refined he's able to get plus 9 to all of his stats in the combat and he also gets phantom speed plus 7 with this weapon refined so that is really helpful for him as an older unit for the speed checks and it does help him with the damage reduction that he has got in his weapon he can also heal up 7 hp after the combat and then he can finally get the full tempo effect which completely neutralizes any kind of guard skill of the opponents or any kind of special acceleration skills and he can also pierce through the damage reduction skills of opponents by 50 percent so this is the kind of damage reduction having that we have seen on physical null follow-up and also on the tempo 4 skills so having full tempo is really good because it is not that easy to get and outsource from any kind of support unit like it is with null follow-up for example and piercing through the damage reduction is going to be helping in the metagame where we have so much damage reduction going on he of course himself does have damage reduction that is completely pierceable as well so that is something you'll have to watch out for if you're going to be tanking with him and atrocity 2 is the remix skill that he has got and now it can debuff the opponent for minus 4 attack speed and defense and he still has the true damage based on 25 percent of his attack which is not going to be added to any kind of aoe special and he also gets 40 percent damage reduction on foes first attack so this is going to be stacking up with the damage reduction in his weapon refine but this damage reduction is only for the first attack of the opponent and this is not going to be applicable for the brave attacks the smoke effects have also been improved so he can debuff minus six to all stats of the opponent and also inflict them with the guard status and also pulse smoke after the combat on the target and the foes within three spaces of that target so having three space smoke is really good and it does help him function as a tank especially in something like etherate's offense so having the guard status be active on the opponent while also getting pulse smoke is really good for the survival and he does have the full tempo effect so the enemies are not going to be able to get the special acceleration from their skills so it all adds up for him to become a speed tank who can hit really really hard with the true damage and also cut through the damage reduction of the opponent and it is going to be helping against many nukes because a lot of times they have some kind of damage reduction in their weapon or remote sparrow or remote mirror so having the damage reduction of the enemies is good and the 7 hp healing is going to be helpful as the self-sustain overall this is a pretty solid upgrade for legendary dimitri even though this weapon refine and remix is not the most insane it is still pretty solid and it is going to be helping him function a lot better now and he can be used in a lot of different game modes but he is going to be appreciating any kind of support that he can get for his tanking like veiled support with the drive scale is going to be amazing for ether raids and speed stacking on him is going to be really really important because nowadays we have insanely fast nukes and because he does not have null follow-up in his kit outsourcing null follow-up by the use of infantry null follow-up or infantry speed tactic it's going to be the best thing that he can do for him because he's going to be really appreciating having the full null follow-up status. Legendary Dimitri does get attack speed clash as the remix skill even though he doesn't really get any kind of extra movement from his preferred weapon and he doesn't really have Kanto but still it can be worked out if you're going to be building him up on a budget because you can simply give him even Tempest and with his default build and with the odd Tempest he's permanently going to be having 3 movement so that is going to be enabling the full usage of the clash kill and he can just run a special like Moonbow, Glimmer, Luna so even at low merges he could be used this way to make use of his clash kill but if you're a big Dimitri fan then you certainly need to fodder off some premium skills to him and Vital Astra and Attack Speed Finish 4 is definitely one of those so Attack Speed Finish 4 is going to be giving him even more healing and the healing that he gets from his weapon is after the combat while the finish healing is in the combat so it is pretty good for staying healthy and it is also going to be giving him true damage as he's constantly going to be triggering vital astra and again having vital astra as a special does mean that you're not only going to be getting the damage reduction by having it pre-charge but you can also trigger it twice in a single round of combat because of the full tempo effect that dimitri has got and time pulse 4 is going to be constantly looping vital astra so it can provide him with more damage reduction that he can stack and if you can only outsource null follow-up then it is a sacred seal that he can run but ideally you should be outsourcing null follow-up and running something else in a sacred seal so that he can get extra speed i really think that after his weapon refine he kind of prefers having godlike reflexes over vital astra because 
He does have the full tempo effect in his weapon, so you can run a build like this, especially with a distant counter skill, where you're going to be facing units with lethality, deadeye, and a lot of damage reduction piercing. So Godlike Reflexes does provide you with damage reduction that is not pierceable by those skills, which is really good to have because all of the other damage reduction that he has got is completely pierceable and the phantom speed built in his weapon does help him with a speed check for godlike reflexes and he can easily loop godlike reflexes by having the bread sacred seal and also by having the full tempo effect and he can also run speed smoke 4 or panic smoke 4 depending on the fodder that he have got and this build can be optimized so that he can be at his peak performance with godlike reflexes and that is of course going to be taking use of distant attack speed solo and also attack speed pledge so attack speed pledge does give you these special charges status and that frees up your sacred seal from running any kind of darting breath so you can stock up even more speed and the pledge skill is really good even though it is really rare but it has amazing synergy with the full tempo from his weapon and it is going to be the perfect slotsy skill to be run with godlike reflexes build if you're going to be using him as a godlands and ether raids offense then prime skill is something that you can run in a slot a and you will need four status effects so that you can trigger the distant counter effect of the prime skill and that is not hard to do in ether raids offense with the mythics that we have gotten and you can easily run stuff like hather or plumeria and astro season and Veil vale is an amazing support unit for Dimitri because he does have a lot of damage reduction which is pierceable so having the drive scale effect is going to be adding to the tanking prowess of Dimitri and again like I said the pledge skill is absolutely amazing with godlike reflexes for looping it and it does provide you with another status effect which is going to be contributing towards the prime scale so he can function as a really good omni tank with a build like this and with good support units. If you're gonna be using him in arena, then you can run Vital Astro with Time Pulse 4 so that he can have more damage reduction and a distant counter skill can definitely help him function as a tank who can kill the ranged opponents. But you will have to watch out for damage reduction piercing because if you're not running godlike reflexes, then all of the damage reduction is pierceable. And if you do have some kind of special cooldown support on your team, then I would definitely suggest running godlike reflexes, especially when you're gonna be running distant counter on him. But even if he cannot, he's still going to be functioning as a pretty nice water legendary unit, even though he does not really score all that high by the modern standards. And of course, how can I not mention Gale Force on a unit that has got full tempo? So you can easily run Gale Force on him by running Flash Barrow or Flashing Blade to get the special charges. And Time Pulse 4 could be run along with some kind of special cooldown support from a unit like Asker or Garrick so that he can have a two cooldown Gale Force. And that is going to be helping him tremendously trigger Gale Force even if he one shots the opponent and because of the full tempo effect that he has got he doesn't really care about the guard skills of the enemies so you can function as a pretty good Gale Force unit if that's what you want to do with him but unfortunately he doesn't really have any kind of extra movement or Kanto that would have been really really amazing for a Gale Force unit. Finally if you really want to use him in summoner duels then you could use him with Brave Sorin because he can only really function as a raid boss like he used to back then. Uh, when he didn't really get a weapon refine and before he fell off because he does have the refine condition where he needs to be within two spaces of an ally to get the effects in the enemy phase so he's not going to be going deep into the enemy lines and really killing stuff instead he's going to be wanting to stick around his teammates and brave soren is a great way of using him because he can function as a pretty good near savior with his high defense and the fact that he has got a lot of damage reduction so it can be helpful if you're a huge dimitri fan and you can just provide him with the external null follow-up support so that he can function and take on the melee threats plumeria is an astro mythic unit who's an amazing mythic because she's a dancer and she fulfills two roles and she gets a weapon refine and a remix and her remix is definitely a lot better than her weapon refine so Flower of Plenty does give her plus 3 resistance and now she can get plus 10 attack and resistance in the combat and she can also give out plus 4 attack and resistance in the combat to the allies in 5 rows and 3 columns centered on Plumeria. So it is pretty much like before and now she can have the guaranteed follow up attack which can help her because she is really slow and finally she can inflict the gravity status on the target and foes within one space of the target after the combat. So this weapon refine is definitely not that good. Uh, still, it can be situationally useful because the gravity effect can be helpful for the pot collection. Plumeria can just attack the last remaining unit and hopefully not kill them. And then you can just uh, try and get to the pots with stuff like Regan or Sather. So the gravity status is situationally helpful for collecting the pots. But other than that, you're not really going to be attacking 
with Plumeria that much because she's a dancer and her role is dancing and supporting the allies, which she definitely does and even better now with her remix Sweet Dreams Plus. So she can dance the ally and refresh their action and also grant them plus 5 visible buff to all of their stats and also give them the player phase follow up status which we have seen before on Naga. So this can be helpful if you're trying to go in with a player phase unit but the most useful status effect is definitely the Hexblade status that you can give. So Hexblade status is really good because it is going to be helping your tanks, your nukes against many of the units that have polarized bulk and you're going to be attacking the lower of their defense or resistance. So that kind of adaptive damage is really good to have and all of these visible status effects do help towards activating something like a prime skill for an ally. So giving out more status effects is always good and then she can also debuff the nearest foes within 5 spaces of the target ally for minus 5 to all of her stats. Overall, the remix is going to be a lot more influential for Plumeria than the weapon refine because she is a dancer and having this kind of offensive weapon refine doesn't really do her too too many favors but like I said, it could be situationally useful. So if you're trying to build her up on a budget then you can simply give her Wings of Mercy 3 as the slot B skill and run aerobatics so that she can teleport and Glimmer can be a pretty good special because she does have pretty high attack stats and attack resistance hold is the new remix skill that she has got so you can keep it or you could even replace it with other supportive skills that we have gotten or even something budget like a drive skill so all of that could be done depending on your team and your usage and if you're going to be giving her premium skills then firestorm dance 3 is absolutely amazing so that she can get kanto even after teleporting so it is really helpful for retreating and it also gives the desperation status to the target ally which is amazing with the guaranteed follow-up attack that she can give with her dance. So the synergy between those two status effects is really good and you can also run guidance for or soaring guidance so that you can support your teammates with the teleportation and you can even give her rock slide dance 3 and infantry speed tactic and this way she can function as a really good omni tank support. Even if you don't really have Haether, she herself can give out 4 status effects and fully trigger the prime skill and its distant counter effect so it can be helpful if you have an infantry omni tank. If you're using her with safe tanks then she can certainly be used with the hold skill that she has got now and also attack resistance rain sacred seal. So the idea is pretty simple she wants to be positioned above the safe tanks so that she can inflict the debuff on the enemy and then she can get saved by the safe tanks and this is even better now because she does give out the hexblade status upon dancing so your safe tanks can have the adaptive damage and a lot of times they're going to be hitting the resistance of the enemy so the resistance debuff from her slot C and sacred seal is going to be really good and the attack debuff does help your safe tanks have better bulk. If you want to make productive use out of Plumeria's resistance then you can give her still water and skills like sabotage attack resistance and also defense res ploy 3 which is going to be helping your teammates but just keep in mind that Freya is going to be cleansing the ploy and the sabotage debuff and the status effects that you inflict on them so it could be helpful but only against non Freya teams. And finally if you do plus and merge her as one of your core mythic units in ether raids then she could also be used in arena with our dual flying 4 which we have received in the limited ephemera manual and I use her every time there's astro season coinciding with the arena because having a mythic dancer is just going to be making things easy even if she doesn't really score the highest so she can run firestorm dance which like I said has amazing synergy with the guaranteed follow up attack status that she can give from her dance and you can run her with soaring guidance or guidance 4 for the extra mobility. Flame Emperor gets a pretty nice weapon refine for a grail unit in Flame Battle Axe. So this inflicts minus X attack and defense debuff on the foe in the combat and the debuffs that you get depend on foe's maximum special cooldown count multiplied by 2 and then subtracted by 15. So if you're facing an opponent with 1 cooldown special then you're going to be able to get minus 13 attack and defense debuff on them which is really really good and at the bare minimum you're going to be able to get minus 7 attack and defense debuff with this effect which does go well with stacking up the debuff with this weapon refine which further inflicts minus 5 attack and defense debuff on the opponent and you can also get the guard effect in the combat so these are the in combat debuffs that flame emperor can get and flame emperor can also inflict the visible attack debuff on the opponent and the sabotage status on the foes that are in three rows and three columns centered on flame emperor so this is pretty unique for an armor unit providing this kind of sabotage status support to their allies and this is going to be amazing especially if you stack this up with full penalty doubler status from something like rion plumeria for example 
and the attack debuff along with Sabotage status is going to be helping Flame Emperor get even more bulky and also provide support at the same time to their allies. And finally, they also get guaranteed follow-up attack, which is pretty good to have on a slow unit like this. Overall, Flame Emperor is still going to be competing with a lot of Axe Armor units for that near savior role. And being a green armor unit is not the best when we have got so many red threads, but still, if you've invested in them or if you really like them, then this is a pretty nice weapon refine for a Grail unit because of the attack debuffs that you can do on the opponent, which really improves the survivability of Flame Emperor and you also provide the sabotage status support to your allies. And if you double down and run a lot of teammates with a lot of debuffs and with stuff like Plague and Weapons or Faux Penalty Doubler Effect, then this is going to be functioning really well for your team. If you're going to be building a Flame Emperor after this weapon refine, then you'll definitely need to spend some resources to get the premium skills because they are going to be functioning as a near save armor unit and you can run special fighter 4 so that you can get the special charges and also the healing which is going to be going well with Ignis but unfortunately it is going to be having the overlap with the guard effect with their weapon still it is going to be providing you with some effects which are going to be useful and attack defense unity is definitely going to be one of the best lot of skills that you can run and if you're on a budget then attack defense bond 4 can also be an option as we did get that in the limited ephemera manual you can also run Hardy Fighter in their slot B because they already get the guaranteed follow-up attack from their weapon. So this allows you to go the full defense route and you can also run close defense 4 to ignore any kind of visible buffs of the opponent. So it is also a really good slot A option. And Steady Breath is really good with Escution because if the enemy doubles you then you're going to be able to get Escution even on their double attack which is going to be good for the survival. And something like this could be useful in Aetherite's defense if you really want to use them in the competitive game mode. But in my opinion, the best build that you can run on Flame Emperor after this weapon refine is definitely with Gambit. Because Gambit allows you to get 50% damage reduction on this kind of armor unit who has a lot of attack debuffs. And that is really good with Aether or Miracle as a 5 cooldown special which you can run. And it also gives you 15 true damage per hit which is good for hitting hard. And like I said before, Attack Defense Unity is a really good slotty skill that you can run. And if you're going to be running a high cooldown special like Aether, then a Breath Sacred Seal can be pretty good so that you can charge up your specials faster. And Gambit is by far their best slotty skill that you can get because Flame Battle Axe doesn't really have minus and special cooldown. So you can get the full damage reduction out of this which is going to be making Flame Emperor really tanky with all of the attack debuffs that they can do. And finally, if you really, really want to build them up as a far savior, then you can try and run Distant Stance and you can get Armored Beacon and Ventral Fighter 4 from Young Hector. And even though Ventral Fighter 4 does have the overlap with their weapon with the guaranteed follow-up attack, it is still a pretty good skill to have for getting that follow-up negation and also getting the attack debuff on the enemy, which is going to be stacking up with all of the attack debuffs that they can do and also getting the special charges which is going to be pretty nice with armored beacon and even though flame battle axe doesn't really provide minus on special cooldown armored beacon is still an amazing special to have because it provides you with unpierceable damage reduction on the enemy special so this is going to be really helpful against the pre-charged specials of the enemies and i wouldn't really recommend you to use them as a far savior but if you really want to then this build could be the way of doing about things Young Marth is the first seasonal 4 star focus to get a weapon refine and he did have the rapier weapon which Fina also had and they would have shared the weapon refine but they really hate the dancers and that's why they gave completely different weapon to Young Marth that is exactly the same as rapier. So just like the original version of rapier, brilliant rapier does give him plus 3 speed and effective damage against armors and cavaliers and now with the weapon refine he's able to get plus 4 to all of these stats in the combat. And he also has Delt Speed Defense, which means that any kind of visible buff of the enemy to their speed and defense is going to be getting completely neutralized by Young Marth, which is really good. And then he also has Vantage now at 80% or below HP, so the HP has been improved a bit. And he also has Bonus Doubler 4 built in, just like Brave Marth's Weapon Refine. And then finally, he also gets True Damage based on 15% of his speed, which is going to be helping him with the Vantage effect that he has got in his weapon. So having bonus doubler 4 is going to be pretty good for getting extra stats and the dull effect is going to be helpful for a unit like Young Marth who is a bit older and is not the fastest in the modern times and it is going to be helping him speed stack and overall this weapon refine is pretty decent 
but as you would have expected, this is going to be facing competition from Brave Marth himself, as he did get a weapon refine, and his vantage is not dependent on his HP. So that is a lot better compared to what Young Marth has got, because he will have to take a hit or use something like Winter Bernadetta or Spring Bernadetta to fall into the vantage range, and then he's going to be able to function. But still, he doesn't really have damage reduction of Brave Marth built in the weapon. And he does have the effective damage against cavalry units and armors instead of having effective damage against dragons. So that could come into the play. And Brave Marth is still going to be the superior vantage unit. But that's kind of expected because this is Young Marth and also a forced to focus. So he's kind of like the discount uh, Brave Marth. But still he can work with this weapon if I And keep in mind that he is going to be eligible for his rerun in Hall of Forms. So before you spend premium skills on him, you can try and wait and see if his badge does win the Hall of Forms Revival poll. He also has his exclusive special in Hero's Blood, which is basically the Fire Emblem special of Legendary Marth, which then got replaced by Shining Emblem. So it's a pretty old special and it has not aged the best because we have things like Vital Astra now that has got the same damage output, but can actually give you the damage reduction, which is really helpful compared to the visible buffs that Hero's Blood gives you. So I would say that Vital Astra, if you have access to it, is going to be better than a special. And if you're going to be building him up in the modern times, then he's certainly going to be requiring some premium skills. So you can run Special Spiral 4 so that he can loop Vital Astra and trigger it in the Vantage range. And he can just run any kind of distant counter slotty skill so that he can retaliate back to range units and Vantage them. And Attack Speed Oath 4 can be a pretty nice slotty skill so that he can trigger the bonus doubler 4 in his weapon refine and also get extra offenses, which is always going to be helpful to him. And Vital Astra, just like Hero's Blood, does scale off his speed, so it's a pretty good special, and you're going to be piercing through any kind of damage reduction with Special Spiral 4, which is going to be helpful in nuking. Now, if you want to run him as a speed-based tank, then it could be possible because he does get the dealt speed defense in his weapon, and also gets the extra speed and bonus doubler 4, and he can stack it up with bonus doubler 4 in the slot itself, and also run bonus doubler sacred seal so this is going to be making full use out of the visible buffs and he can run spurn 4 and speed smoke 4 for getting the damage reduction and vital astra is mainly going to be there for the damage output but still if it's pre-charged then it can add to more damage reduction so this is also possible now with this weapon refine if you're trying to speed stack on him and if you want to fully optimize young marth then you can try and run attack speed prime 4 in his slot a and also by running Attack Speed Pledge and Attack Oath Echo so that he can get two status effects and you will just need to outsource like two other status effects so that he can trigger Prime's Distant Counter and again Special Spiral 4 with Vital Astra is going to be helpful not only for the damage reduction but also for piercing through the damage reduction of the enemy and constantly looping the special and if you're wanting to use him in Aetherite's offense then he's going to be needing a lot of support because he doesn't really get into the vantage range as easily as Brave Marth. So you'll have to set it up with Spring Bernadetta or Winter Bernadetta, and then you can just reciprocal aid on the lower HP mythic units and fall into the range of his vantage. And also the Brazen Sacred Seal, which is gonna be active when you're gonna be at that low HP. And Brave Male Robin is gonna be the best support unit that you can run with him because it allows you to run Null Counter Disrupt and retaliate back to the Fire Sweep threats on flyer lines and on cav lines and still trigger your special in the vantage range. So Rally Spectrum is an invaluable support for him if you're going to be using him for vantage sweeping in Aetherate's offense. Altena is a demo tuna who gets a weapon refine to her earthly Gatebolg and it did give her plus 3 defense and also dull attack defense which is useful against the foes that have the visible buffs. And now they have changed the condition of her weapon so that she can trigger the debuffs against even the flying opponents, which she previously couldn't. So now she can debuff the opponent for minus 10 attack and defense in the combat. And she also gets true damage based on 10% of her defense. And she also gets guaranteed follow-up attack because she's slow. And finally, she gets attack and defense debuff neutralization. So unfortunately, Altena gets the short end of the stick when it comes to the demo refines because... Even though this weapon refine can help in her role as a bulky flyer, it doesn't really help her too much stand out. And you can easily see this when you compare her to the other lance flyers which focus on their attack and defense, like Travant or even the newer Aryan that we have gotten with Aird Gungnir. So as you can see by the stats, they are really similar stat-wise. And Aryan, because of being new, does only take 5 dragon flowers, 
And if you compare the effects that they've got in their weapon, you'll see that the quality of effects that Travant and Arian have is a lot better than Altena because they just have things like Io Shield, which Altena would have also wanted, and then Travant can debuff the opponent's attack even more. And he also gets guard on the opponent in both phases and also gets the special charges, which goes really well with Gambit in his slot bay, and then Arian just is amazing, providing the charge status and the visible attack and defense buff to himself and the flyers in two spaces. And Altena does really get a lot of true damage. Just to give you an idea, you need to have 100 defense in order to get 10 true damage out of this kind of weapon. And attack and defense debuff neutralization is not going to be having the best of synergy if you had attack defense unity on her or if you have attack defense clash. Um, with the latter part, it is going to be a bit redundant. So she could have gotten maybe one extra effect that could have helped her stand out a bit more because when it comes to Lance Flyers, the competition is immense and it's not just all about the combat, it's also about the support that you can provide to your teammates. And even when it comes to combat, I think I prefer having Travance effects a lot more than Altena. And there's also even more Lance Flyers like Cynthia, Carmag, and even more who have gotten Weapon Refines. And we also have Summer Mail Chess, so there's just too much competition for Altena to really stand out with a Weapon Refine like this. And it is truly unfortunate because we have gotten some pretty nice Weapon Refines for Demo units like Tanya and Echidna. And even last month, I think Chad's Weapon Refine was pretty nice, but unfortunately this Weapon Refine does miss out on the mark. But if you're trying to be optimistic, at least it's not like Death Knight's Weapon Refine where an Arcane Weapon is simply better than that. At least, if you don't really have Arkin Xiang, this weapon can work out for Altena for the role that she's trying to do. If you're trying to build up Altena with this weapon you're fine, then you can run Attack Defense Catch 4 in her slot A, which doesn't really overlap with the Attack and Defense Debuff Neutralization that she has got, and it is functional in both phases, and you can just stack it up with the Sacred Seal, and you can also run Neatray Skill for the mobility, and Attack Smoke 4 can be useful for getting the follow-up negation, and for the mix phase, because she can essentially get the Omni Breaker effect by having the guaranteed follow-up attack from her weapon, and then getting the follow-up negation from Attack Smoke, but ultimately it is going to be completely nullified by any kind of unit that has got null follow-up. So you have to watch out for that, and if you're going to be investing in her heavily, then I think Gambit is easily the best lobby skill that you can run on her, and because she doesn't really get guard from her weapon, and because we are running Gambit for in the slot B, you can run Sturdy Stance 3 in her slot A so that she can get guard and the extra attack and defense, and this way she can focus more on her enemy phase, and you will have to run a 5 cooldown special like Aether or Miracle so that you can get 50% damage reduction with Gambit 4 and get 15 true damage per hit. And if you want to have more of a mixed phase option, then Attack Defense Catch is something that you can run, and the Squad A Secret Seal is also pretty nice as an option, and because she is a flying unit, she can of course run stuff like Guidance 4 and Soaring Guidance to support her allies, and even though she can be built up with her Weapon Refine, if you just like Arkin Xiang more, and if you want to retaliate back with Bonfires, then it is something you can run, and it's a pretty decent alternative because it gives you minus one special cooldown, making Bonfire into a two cooldown special, and it also provides you with the special charges, so you can retaliate back with Bonfires, and you still get the guaranteed follow-up attack and also get the follow-up negation at the same time. And if you're trying to run attack defense unity, then Arcane Xiang is of course going to be the way to go. And Guard Bearing 4 can provide you with that damage reduction. So even though this section is about her weapon refine, if you do have access to Arcane Xiang, then it could be a pretty nice side grade as well. Ocean gets a surprisingly good weapon refine for a unit with a conditional distant counter effect. I mean, the condition is a lot better now. He just needs to be at or above 25% HP. And Vooj does provide him with minus one special cooldown. And now with the Weapon Refine, he can also get plus 8 to all of these stats. And he also gets the Bulwark effect, which is definitely going to be useful in something like Aether Raids for making sure that your allies are not getting sniped by the enemies. And he also gets 30% damage reduction on Foe's first attack. And then he can get true damage on his next attack depending on the total damage that he has reduced. So this is damage reflection that we have seen before on Echidna's Weapon Refine, on Hans's weapon, and now Ocean also has this on his axe. So you want to stack up as much damage reduction as you possibly can so that he can reflect more damage on the enemy and hopefully kill them. And finally, he also gets 7 HP healing after the combat, which is going to be having good synergy with the HP threshold for his 
conditional distant counter. So, Ocean has an amazing weapon refine that allows him to function as a pretty unique axe infantry unit. The only problem is that he is not very fast for the modern standards. So you're gonna be needing to speed stack a lot on him so that he can function with the damage reduction. And the good thing is that he has got distant counter in his weapon. So his slot is open and he can run a bunch of skills in his slot that can just be really helpful in the combat like the finish skill or even the unity skill and that is something not a lot of axe infantry units can do but again he's not in the three star four star pool like a kidna so getting the merges on him is going to be a bit tough now the builds that i'm about to show can be run on a lower merged ocean but because he's old more merges and more dragon flowers do help a lot and every single stat point does count so if you're going to be building him up with stacking damage reduction then he can Definitely go with Vital Astra in Time Pulse 4 and always have it pre-charged. And this way he can get even more damage reduction. And I think tier 4 damage reduction skills are really really good because they're going to be providing him with the Phantom Speed effect which is so helpful for an older unit like him. And Finish Kill is an amazing slotty skill he can run which is going to be giving him even more healing which is of course good for the self-sustain and also even more true damage. And Spurn also gives you true damage so the stacking of damage reduction and the true damage is pretty much the playstyle that Ocean is now going to be doing with this weapon refine. And even though we have got the new ploy skills, you can still try and unity stack on him with Legendary Mid Robin by running attack speed unity because he has got a distant counter weapon and he can do that. And you can also run godlike reflexes for a special that can provide you with the unpierceable damage reduction and also even more true damage. So you can try and loop this with Darting Breath Sacred Seal and Speed Smoke 4 and Spurn 4 can provide you with more damage reduction. And again, Unity stacking is going to be really important because he does not really have as much speed as a lot of the modern units and nukes nowadays are really fast. So this is one way of doing things. And if you have an extra Temera, then he can also run Bonus Doubler 4 in his slot A and stack up Bonus Doubler. And he can also run Young or Legendary Eliwood to stack up even more Bonus Doubler and just start stack on him at this kind of max investment and Temera can provide a lot of good skills that he can get at the same time. Godlike Reflexes is definitely going to be the end game build for him because it allows him to just get that unpierceable damage reduction and the phantom speed from tier 4 damage reduction skills do help with the speed check of Godlike Reflexes so it is something you can run with the pledge slotsy skill so that you can free up your sacred seal from running any kind of breath effect and he can just stack up even more speed. So this is going to be the optimized godlike reflexes build that he can run. And this can certainly be used in Aetherite's offense with good support units. And he's going to be doing a pretty nice job as an Omni tank. And if you want, you can even run Null Counter Disrupt in his slot B because he does have a distant counter weapon. And he can just try and function as an Omni tank. And Veil is going to be so important for a build like this because... We need the drive scale effect so that we're not getting nuked by the damage reduction piercing specials. And because we're not running a tier 4 damage reduction skill that can provide phantom speed, you can just let go of godlike reflexes and instead have vital astra. And that's why Veil vale is so important because all of the damage reduction that he has got is completely pierceable. So the drive scale is going to be helping you tremendously. The final unit from this weapon refine batch is going to be Mamori and she gets a weapon refine to her Mirage Axe that already gave her plus 3 resistance and also follow up negation and now with this weapon refine she's able to get plus 8 attack and speed and also plus 10 defense and resistance in combat and in the enemy phase she can debuff the enemy for minus x attack and defense in the combat and the debuffs that you do depend on the number of unused action foes times 3 so this is like a better shield session that at the minimum is going to be providing you with minus 6 debuffs and at max is going to be providing you with minus 12 attack and defense debuffs. And this is really helpful on any kind of tank and does make her more bulky. And she also provides the drive 7 HP post combat healing and defense resistance plus 4 to the allies in two spaces. And this is the kind of drive healing that we have seen before on Silk's Weapon Refine, on Celine, and recently on Gatekeeper. But the range of Mamori's drive healing is only two spaces. But still it's pretty good if you're going to be running her with any kind of other save tank. So it does work out in that sense. And the extra defense and resistance is always going to be helpful so that you can tank better. And this kind of healing does provide the self-sustain if the other save tank doesn't really have their own healing. And then Mamori also gets 30% damage reduction in her combat for every single attack. 
So this is not just on the first hit of the enemy, which is pretty good. And then finally, she can heal up 7 HP after the combat, which seems to be the theme of this uh, refined batch where everyone gets 7 HP healing after the combat. So overall, this weapon refine is actually pretty solid for Mamori, and it does make her into a pretty nice near save armor unit with a supportive aspect where your other save tanks or other tanks can heal up the HP after their combat. Still, there is going to be a lot of competition when it comes to this kind of role, but at least she can provide the healing, which can be nice for something like Etherate's offense if you want to use Mamori as your near savior. And she can even function as a far savior with her resistance, but the ranged threats are a lot more annoying to take on than the melee threats. So if you're going to be building her up, then they definitely want you to run her as a near save tank because she's going to be functioning in the enemy phase and you need to have sturdy stance 3 on her so that you can get the guard effect. And they really want you to put Vengeful Fighter 4 on her because this is going to be giving her the breath effect and also even more attack debuff on the enemy, which is going to be stacking up with her weapon refine. And the follow up negation kind of overlaps with her Mirage Axe, but still not the biggest deal. And because she doesn't really have any kind of guaranteed follow up attack from the refine, you will need to run this kind of fighter skill to get the follow up attack. And this can work out with a 4 cooldown special like Ignis and she already gets the damage reduction so overall she's going to be a pretty nice near save tank with a build like this and I hope that in the future we have a lot more fighter 4 skills like maybe crafty fighter 4 which is going to be providing her guard effect so that way she can run some other slotty skills like close defense 4 for completely ignoring the visible buffs of the enemies. You will still need to run steady breath if you want to get these special charges and finally at max investment she could be used as a far safe tank with armored beacon and this is going to be providing her with the unpierceable damage reduction which is going to be stacking up with the damage reduction that she already gets so she can function as a decent far save but we definitely have a lot better options now and armored beacon is going to be helping you against the specials of the enemies but unfortunately with a build like this you'll be missing out on having the guard effect which is really important for tanking Make sure to share this video with your friends if they're trying to build up any of these units after their weapon refine and I hope you all enjoyed. If you did then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps you tremendously. And if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more free videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Faye when it comes to giving refines to dancers. So with that said I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.